Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthem of Barbados. Senator Dr. the Most Honorable Jerome Walcott, Senior Minister and Minister of Health and Wellness. Dr. the Honorable William F. Dugid, Senior Minister in the Prime Minister's Office. The Honorable Kirk Humphrey, Minister of People Empowerment and Elder Affairs. Other members of the Cabinet of Barbados. Ms. Cynthia Ford, Special Advisor on Elder Affairs and other parliamentarians. Members of the Diplomatic Corps, Chairman of the Statutory Boards, the Most Honorable Alice Jordan, Permanent Secretary in the Prime Minister's Office, the Most Honorable Janet Phillips, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the Most Honorable Kenneth George, Chief Medical Officer in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Mr. Jehu Wilcher, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of People in Parliament and Elder Affairs. Other Permanent Secretaries. Dame Antoinette Billy Miller. Chairman of Statutory Boards, Ms. Marilyn Rice. President of the Barbados Association of Retired Persons, Civil Society Representatives, our consultants, specially invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Welcome to the ceremony to mark the start of a beginning of an innovative and forward-thinking vision to life that of the new geriatric hospital on these grounds. To accomplish such a vision, one needs a like-minded team and one needs a creative and experienced leadership to get the job done. Mr. Joseph Steinbach, Managing Director of Steinbach Management Services and the project's project manager, has been involved in the construction industry since high school and on graduating from university in 1983 in engineering he made the bold decision to work with a contractor rather than following the traditional path of joining an engineering consulting practice during his 30 years as a contractor he has had the distinction of managing what were considered to have been the best construction companies at their respective times, Nihal Construction and Rotherly Construction, Inc. 
Mr. Steinbach was awarded for his project management services on the Harrison's Point Isolation Facilities by the government of Barbados with the Gold Award of Excellence in the year 2021 Independence Awards. I invite Mr. Steinbach to join us with his welcome remarks and an overview of the project. Mr. Steinbach. Good afternoon, everyone. Protocol having been established, I will just go straight into the remarks. The new geriatric facility here at Waterford is a modern purpose-built facility that considers the needs of residents, staff, and its management. Give you a slight overview of the project. This facility will be done in two phases. In phase one, a main hospital building, which will house 300 beds over three stories. And on the screens, you will have an idea of what the thing will look like, the buildings will look like. There'll be 10 lounges, one for every two wards. There'll be two treatment rooms per floor, a rehab unit, a daycare care facility, staff offices and amenities, ancillary facilities like kitchen, laundry, pharmacy, workshop, etc. In phase two, we will add another 105 beds and six lounges. The project has been designed to international building codes and takes into account the use of the buildings, not just a standardized wind speeds when we're designing buildings now. And it also accommodates for the effects of climate change and building for climate change. Hurricane and earthquake loadings have also been accounted for. This building has also been designed to operate with its windows closed and without air conditioning, should we suffer from an ash cloud similar to the event we had a few years ago. The, de the design has a number of different features in it. First of all, it has a tertiary wastewater treatment for all of its sewage and wastewater. And the water after treatment will be utilized not just for irrigation, but for flushing of, of toilets as well. The building's roof will be utilized for the placement of photovoltaic panels, which will help reduce the running cost of the building. It's been a lot of effort to get to where we are today. The design team, as we heard that we're the project managers already, Steinbach Management Services, we have the architects, Arcus Design Group, civil and structural engineers, Spencer Thorne Consultants, Quantus Severs, BCQS International. MEP engineering is being done by A to B consultants. And we have our planning consultant in Richard, in Richard Gill Associates. This team has been working long hours over the past year to ensure that the stringent requirements of the client are met. And I would like to thank them all for their hard work and dedication to meeting the challenging deadlines set out for this project. As we embark on the implementation phase of the project, we would like to welcome to the team the construction side of things. And that will be led by CO Williams Construction. And they will have in conjunction with them Preconco Limited, Versatile Construction, and they will be managed by Blueprint Management. This group will turn our designs into reality. The construction is scheduled to be completed in 83 weeks from today. So in my short remarks, let me just end by welcoming you all to be here in 83 weeks when we do the opening ceremony, which we will hope will be a really pleasant affair just like this evening. So thank you all very much. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you very much, Mr. Steinbach. Mrs. Heather Payne Drakes has a BSc in Applied Sociology from the University of the West Indies, Cape Phil Barbados.
an MSc in Healthcare Administration from Barry University, Miami Shores, Florida, and an international master's degree in mental health policy and services from the new University of Lisbon Medical School in Portugal. Mrs. Payne Drake has spent the majority of her career with the Ministry of Health, where she functioned in the roles of administrative officer, health planner, assistant hospital director, psychiatric hospital, and currently is the acting general acting hospital manager at the Geriatric Hospital. I now invite Mrs. Payne Drake to share her thoughts on the project. Senator Dr. De Moss, Honorable Jerome Walcott, other cabinet ministers, senior public officials and representatives of statutory boards, members of civil society, consultants, specially invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Along with the staff of the Geriatric Hospital, I welcome the opportunity to participate in this groundbreaking ceremony for our youth facility. Certainly, we did not anticipate that after presenting the blueprint for services and required infrastructure at the youth facility, we would be able to witness the groundbreaking in such a relatively short space of time. To say that we are very pleased on this occasion is an understatement. And we would like to express sincere gratitude to the consultant design team, the Barbados Tourism Investment Inc., the Ministry of Health and the Wellness, and of course, to the Prime Minister, the Honorable Mia Amor Motley. The St. Michael District Hospital, commonly referred to as the Geriatric Hospital, was established in 1884. Over the past 139 years, the hospital has transitioned from an institution providing custodial care for the poor and indigent and persons with mental and physical disabilities to a full-fledged medical facility that delivers comprehensive health care to elderly individuals whose medical condition requires management in a residential health care setting. This achievement is not only attributed to the dedication of our clinical staff, but also to the personnel delivering support care to the hospital's dietary, laundry, procurement, and maintenance services, all of which are represented here this afternoon. The hospital currently has a staff of 367 persons, including 231 nurses, five medical practitioners, in addition to an infection control officer, dietitian, social workers, and rehabilitation therapy technologists. With 278 clients, we now have outgrown the existing facility, which was not intended to provide the level of clinical care that has now delivered. The current site has deteriorated over time, and there are inherent challenges in its maintenance, with constant need for urgent repairs and renovations. As a result, significant financial resources have been utilized to maintain a safe and functioning facility. Over the past five years, an average of approximately $300,000 has been spent on maintenance annually. Having a youth facility that is fit for purpose of delivering quality health care to our elderly population has therefore become a necessity. The health profile of our clients is characterized by comorbidity, with the majority affected by at least two non-communicable diseases, requiring skilled nursing care and appropriate medical management on a 24-hour basis. In addition to quality health care, good nutrition, exercise, spiritual and so social support are integral to their well-being. The Waterford facility has therefore been designed to further develop the delivery of rehabilitation services that would focus on enhancing physical and mental functionality to improve medical outcomes and promote the overall well-being of clients. 
The rehabilitation units will be outfitted with a gym and pool for therapeutic services. Spaces will also be designed to cater to the social and spiritual well-being of its residents. The presence of a chapel, daycare unit, and safe green spaces will promote the continued involvement of relatives and the wider community. Along with meeting the medical and rehabilitation needs of clients, our aim is also to create and maintain a safe, secure, and comfortable family-centered environment. While our major focus remains on providing excellent medical rehabilitation and recreation services, due care must also be given to ensuring that the working conditions of staff responsible for re delivering these services are conducive to their morale, safety, and well-being. This would, in effect, result in improved standards of care, increased productivity, and efficiency. To this end, all staff members are looking forward to having access to amenities such as a, a, uh, such as a cafeteria, lunch rooms, staff rooms, and lounges that are currently not available, having adequate space to conduct all administrative functions on site will also be a welcome feature of the facility. The decision to create a new geriatric facility in Barbados, which will increase the capacity for care, is timely given the current population and health trends. The demand for long-term medical care for the elderly is expected to rise, requiring an increase in staffing and accommodation for clients. Barbados has been assessed as being an, in, at an advanced phase of the demographic transition with construction of the population groups younger than 60 and the fast-growing group of adults 80 and over. The 2010 population census showed that the elderly comprise approximately 12 percent or over 32,000 persons. By 2030, this proportion is projected to reach 25 percent of the population. A 2019 study published by the Pan American Health Organization in, a co in collaboration with the Ministry of Health and Wellness titled Measuring the Responsiveness of the Health System in Barbados to the Needs of the Aging Population indicated that Barbados' population growth is unique, having exceeded an aging index of 100 older adults per 100 children under the age of 15. That was in 2015. In other words, the number of persons over the age of 60 is greater than the number of persons under the age of 15. Other countries in the non-Latin Caribbean subregion are predicted only to cross that threshold in 2032. Furthermore, estimations for care dependency show that 20% of adults in the 65 an overage group are dependent on care. Increased demand is also attested by the numbers of requests received daily for admission to the hospital for individuals, many of whom are frail and dependent on total care. During 2022, a total of 195 referrals were received and 34 admissions made. Prior to the COVID pandemic, these numbers were considerably higher, with 294 referrals and 141 admissions recorded in 2019, and we anticipate referrals will return to and surpass these levels. In the first two months of this year, 44 referrals were received, representing a 91% increase compared to the corresponding period in 2022. The immediate need to meet the demands of healthcare services for the rapidly increasing aged population cannot be overstated. As a result, the U Geriatric Hospital facility will accommodate 300 clients in its first phase and ultimately 408 clients on the completion of the second phase of the project. The second phase will also enable expansion of community-based services which will provide resources to all citizens to achieve healthy and active aging, prolonging quality of life and reducing dependency and the need for institutionalized care. The hospital's vision to lead in the provision of geriatric healthcare services 
delivering quality, client-centered health care to all residents in Barbados can only be accomplished with the help of our wider community. The hospital has always benefited from contributions made by schools, churches, service organizations, and individuals who recognize the exemplary work done at the hospital and the resources required for it to provide excellent care. The management, staff, and clients wish to thank you for your continued support, and we will continue to welcome your contributions when we've moved into our youth facility here at Waterford. We acknowledge that now, more than ever, meeting the needs of our elderly population cannot be adequately met solely within our institutions. Our plans is to have, our plan is to have a more structured system in place for ongoing dialogue and collaboration which community support can be garnered and develop. This would include strengthening our existing relationships with the private sector, community service organizations, groups and individuals with relevant skills, resources and capacity. The staff at the, at the geriatric hospital look forward to welcoming clients and the community to a youth facility where we can provide optimal care and support for Barbados' elderly population while promoting their dignity and independence. We again wish to express our appreciation to the design consultant team, the Barbados Tourism Investment Inc., the Ministry of Health and Wellness, and we look forward to continued collaboration with you on this endeavor to the opening and to the opening of the new facility. Thank you. Thank you. Before we continue, I'd like to apologize on behalf of the Prime Minister, the Honorable Mia Amor Motley, who is unable to join us this afternoon, but she sends her regards. Our future address today will be delivered by Senator Dr. the Most Honorable Jerome Walcott, Senior Minister and Minister of Health and Wellness. Minister? Good afternoon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Where do I start? <laughs> There's so many of you here, so many of you. The Honorable Dr. William Dugit, Honorable Kirk Humphrey, Minister of People's Empowerment, other cabinet colleagues, members of parliament, the most honorable, no, sorry, Dame Billy Miller, the Most Honorable Jeanette Phillips, PS in the Ministry of Health and Wellness and who has been also involved in this process. The Most Honorable Alice Jordan, Permanent Secretary in the Prime Minister's Office. The Most Honorable Dr. Steve, Dr. The Most Honorable Kenneth George, Chief Medical Officer. Other uh, distinguished officials, members of parliament, of course, the president of BARP, welcome. And of course, Mr. Seinbach and uh, Mr. Stuart Lane, the CEO of the Barbados Tourism Inc. You've had the apology on behalf of the prime minister and I will not even attempt to step in her shoes, but I will Try to do my best, then believe. 139 years ago, amidst the backdrop of increasing concerns on public health, the St. Michael District Hospital, the current geriatric hospital, located on Becker's Road, opened its doors to the public. Initially for those in need, and later specifically for the elderly chronically ill patients who were more dependent on medical and nursing care. For context, 
the geriatric hospital was open just over 20 years after running water was first introduced to the city of Bridgetown. It was open almost 30 years before there was electricity available in Barbados. And indeed, it was open less than 50 years after the abolition of slavery. Much has obviously changed over the decades, but the geriatric hospital and its staff have continued to provide a remarkable service to Barbados and Barbadians, delivering care and attention to many of our nation builders. The staff must be saluted, especially for the sacrifices they made recently during the outbreaks of COVID in caring for the elderly. And I say outbreaks deliberately because there were several outbreaks within that institution. And at times staff stayed on. There was isolation in the hospital and the staff stayed in, left their relatives and stayed there for several days at times. The staff must be also commended, and I've heard the manager speak about it, for the conditions which regrettably oftentimes are not the best and based on the fact that it's an aging building and we have just built, it was not built fit for purpose. They have had to continue working in these conditions and they have done so continually and they should be commended. Ladies and gentlemen, the reality is that in the coming years, caring for our elderly will be an ever increasingly important aspect of our society. It is no secret that Barbados is an aging society. In 2020, the proportion of Barbados's population aged 65 and older was estimated at 16.7%. And this is predicted to almost double to 29.1% by the year 2060. Through the Ministry of People's Empowerment and Elder Affairs, the government has identified the safety, security, and respect of the, nation, of the elderly or nation builders as a key priority. Hence, the continued work of the National Assistance Board as it relates to the provision of home help for the elderly and the newer elderly community care program and the specialized community care and services for disabled elderly. The Ministry of Health and Wellness through the alternative care of the elderly program, costing almost $2 million a year, provides, provides for care in, for persons in private institutions, those who do not require intense nursing and medical care. But while we have all focused, and you've heard the manager, on rejuvenating Barbados's age profile, we must concomitantly make plans, keeping in mind that more Barbadians will be reaching their golden years and thus require improved access to services. It is for these reasons that today's groundbreaking for the Waterford Geriatric Hospital Development Project is one of those seminal moments and is perhaps the single most important piece of health infrastructure since the Queen Elizabeth Hospital was opened in November the 14th, 1964. Ladies and gentlemen, the new geriatric hospital complex will provide comprehensive health care services to older adults with a focus on wellness, community health ser based health services, non institutionalized health care, rehabilitation, and long term care for clients whose medical conditions require hospitalization. Hence, this complex will comprise a number of internal facilities to deliver various types of care and services. The new Waterford Geriatric Hospital, as you have heard, will have 408 beds and will be constructed in two phases. Phase one is anticipated to cost 100,307,000. I said anticipated. And as you know, it starts today. It is expected to take approximately 18 months to construct and will include the main hospital building with 300 beds, including an isolation ward and 10 day rooms. It will provide step-down care for clients 
discharge from the Queen Acute Care of the QEH and provide care to long-term clients with medical complaints. The hospital will be constructed, and you've seen a beautiful photo of it there, will be constructed around internal courtyards and gardens with views and access to safe and protected outdoor spaces. Emphasis will be placed on allowing clients to freely walk around in the outdoors without risk of wandering off the compound. The main building will be three-storied high with clinical services occupying the first two floors and the third floor comprising general medical and nursing administration, conference room, and a classroom. Because as we know, both the medical doctors and the nurses at the geriatric hospital have been indulging in continuing medical and nursing education and have seminars every week. In addition, there will be a state-of-the-art rehabilitation unit with a therapeutic pool, often physiotherapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, and podiatry services. It is anticipated that rehabilitation service will be provided on both a residential and an outpatient basis for clients recuperating from medical conditions, including strokes and heart attacks. Cognizant of the importance for the elderly to be active, the complex will be constructed with common rooms, chapel, therapeutic pool, and walking track to encourage the residents to be active and not just be in their beds. We recognize the needs in the hospital complex will provide residential respite services for clients whose family or caregivers need to take a temporary break. Of course, the daycare and recreational activities for older adults will be provided which obtains currently at the geriatric hospital, although it was curtailed during COVID-19 for obvious reasons. We are mindful of the concerns that are likely to be raised pertaining to the location of the geriatric hospital in the National Botanical Gardens. Can you think of a more serene, peaceful, and beautiful location to provide this beautiful sanctuary for our elderly? But we are addressing the environmental concerns. A tertiary treatment plant will be constructed, including reed beds, and this will allow recycled water to be used for flushing toilets as well as irrigation. And we have been told of the photovoltaic panels to be installed on the roofs. The main building, as you've heard already, will be designed to operate with windows closed and without air condition. The building has been designed, as we've heard, also to incorporate the latest building codes with regards to both earthquakes and hurricane loading events. Ladies and gentlemen, as I close, I must thank a number of persons for their hard work and commitment in bringing us to this groundbreaking ceremony. Mr. Joseph Steinbock and Steinbock Management Inc. Mr. Stuart Lane, the CEO of Barbados Tourism Investment Inc which is the executing project on behalf of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. The most honorable, Jeanette Phillips, the PS in the Ministry of Health. Mrs. Heather Payne Drakes, the hardworking manager of the Geriatric Hospital. And Mr. Danny Gill, the financial consultant, Ministry of Health and, War, War, Health and Wellness. And of course, Dr. the Honorable William Dugid, who has been indefatigable in this entire process. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how we pay respect to our past. And in so doing, prepare for the journey ahead. This is how we offer our nation builders the best possible care, allowing them to age with the grace and dignity they deserve. Let this Waterford Geriatric Hospital be a reminder of who we are as a people for us while we continue to move forward as a nation. I thank you. Thank you, Minister. Well said. You win in that night of oil, let me tell you. It's awesome.
Mr. Christopher G. L. Gibbs, Member of Parliament for the St. Michael West constituency, is the chairman of the Barbados Tourism Investment Inc., or BTI, under whose purview this project falls. I now invite Mr. Gibbs to join us to move the vote of thanks. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, everyone. Protocol having been established, and I'm going to thank all of you anyway in my vote of thanks. The Barbados Tourism Investment Inc.'s mandate is to facilitate tourism development in this country and also is responsible for the rejuvenation of Bridgetown and other city centers. The Cabinet of Barbados has expanded that mandate to include projects that beautify through cultural and historically significant green spaces, such as Freedom Park, Great Golden Square Freedom Park. We also are going to be constructing a park in Archers Bay, St. Lucie, later this year for the public. And we, also have con we have also implemented and constructed two flood mitigation projects, one being Constitution River Phase 3 in the city of Bridgetown, and also Salt Pond Phase 2 in Spitestown. Both of those projects have worked very well to provide what I call the public good. And in this instance, the geriatric hospital, we're facilitating this project. This gives the BTII board and myself the greatest honor of all. So as such, I would like to say, and the Honorable Dr. Jerome Walker said it quite nicely, that society is measured by how it treats its elderly and the most vulnerable. And this geriatric hospital, upon completion, as you heard, after phase one and phase two, will have 400 beds. This will signal to our citizens and the world that Barbados cares deeply about its elderly citizens. So as such, as such a noble undertaking, I have a few people to thank. First and foremost, I would like to thank the Almighty above. Without him, nothing is possible. I would like to also thank the Honorable Prime Minister. I'm sorry that she could not be here today. And the Cabinet for appropriating the monies necessary. You heard how much it's gonna cost. <laughs> so I look forward to that. I would like to thank the CEO of the Barbados Tourism Investment Inc. He's a hardworking gentleman. I swear he has about 36 hours in a day. And the extra 12 hours, you know that's suit RPM, very good. I would like to thank the most honorable, Senator Dr. The Most Honorable, Jerome Walcott, Minister of Health, who will be facilitating this project on behalf. And also, I would like to thank the most honorable, Jeanette Phillips, and the most honorable, Kenneth George, as well. Thank you to the honorable Kurt Humphrey. Minister of People Empowerment and Elder Affairs, through the Companionship Program, the National Assistance Board, the National Disabilities Unit, the needs of the elderly and the most vulnerable of this country are adequately attended to. I want to say a special thanks to Ms. Cynthia Ford, who was the previous minister in the, with that same portfolio. And we all know about what she has done in this country. I want to thank you to PSC Most Honorable Alice Jordan, who is the do everything behind the scenes. She's the glue that holds everything and everybody together. 
I want to thank Mr. Joe Steinbach for bringing his vast knowledge, experience, expertise to this project. And I can safely say that this project is in good hands. I would also like to thank the president of BART, Ms. Marion Rice Boyne. Thank you for being here, man. And I really could not do this exercise. I, I don't want to embarrass her. But I, I could not do this exercise without thanking Dame Billy Miller. Honestly, I, the epitome of aging with grace, aging like a fine wine, <laughs> the wisdom. <laughs> I, I have to thank you for just, for just being you. Thank you, Dame Billy. And ladies and gentlemen, as that um, famous Vanessa Williams song goes, I save the best for last. I want to thank the seniors here today. If you would do me the honor of standing, stand to be recognized. Thank you. You are the foundation of this great nation. You are our mothers, our fathers, our grandmothers, our grandfathers. And if you're lucky and special, great grandmother and great grandfather. You built this country. You are the pillars of this nation. And if this nation is great, it's because of you. You raised us. You lifted us up. Now it is our turn to lift you up. On behalf of this great nation, Barbados, we promise to always honor you and cherish you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here and good evening. Thank you so much, Mr. Gibbs. I now invite Senator Dr. the Most Honorable Jerome Walcott and the second vice chair of the Barbados Christian Council and rector of St. Paul's Anglican Church, Bay Street, a neighbor of the current geriatric hospital the Reverend Irma Ambrose, to make their way to the groundbreaking site for this historic moment. Let us bow our heads to pray. Loving and gracious Father, Creator God, we come this day with much, after much planning and discussing and agreeing and disagreeing and compromising and investing and researching and finally deciding. And we know that these days are not yet over. In reality, Lord, it is likely that it will get more complicated. 
Nonetheless, Lord, we pray that you will bless us and fill us with compassionate love as we move forward. We give you thanks for those who have done their work and for the help of the various professionals. We have been blessed with this initial phase of our new geriatric hospital. Lord, may we continue this collaborative effort and so we give thanks to get the, today for the generous spirits and pockets of our financial supporters who will help government knowing that all that we do in our nation is for lifting us up. And so, Lord, we move forward this first phase of the brown breaking ceremony. And we are awed by your, the human capacity that we have to create. So, gracious Father, give us grateful hearts for this space, and we promise to use it with dignity and purpose. As we watch this place, let us always extend care and healing to our elderly brothers and sisters of our nation. We thank you, Lord, for the spirit of life and love as we move through these next days, weeks, and months. And may we always look with gratitude for the progress as we seek to accomplish this and much more. And this we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.